Okay, folks, something a little bit different for you today. I thought I would do a tour of my office where all of the content for the channel is uh, created. We'll start, I think, first with my desk. I'm in the very fortunate position that I've got two PCs. One of those is for making content, as in video editing and streaming. That's the PC that you can see here. It's a fully water-cooled uh, PC. It's got a Threadripper 3960X in it and two uh, 2080 Ti's in SLI. That was also my gaming machine at one point, but I'm in the process of putting this machine together. The intention is that that will be water-cooled as well. It's air-cooled at the moment. And that machine is purely just for driving the sim. So it's got a 5800X3D in it. All of that extra cash giving great performance in the simulator. It's got a 3080 uh, Ti, 32 gigs of G-Skill, very, very low a CAS 14 um, latency memory. On top of that, of course, the Reverb G2 on its perch. The cable will not detach, the, even with a version two cable, it doesn't break apart. So I need to leave that permanently plugged into the machine and getting round the back of that thing is not easy to do. So I just leave that permanently plugged in all the time. I've got a couple of cheap monitors uh, on the sides here. They, they were only about £80 each, but do give me a little bit more uh, real estate. And then I've got the ultra wide uh, monitor in the middle. Lots of my content filmed in 4K. I actually don't have a 4K monitor, but I do have in this PC a 4K capture card. And I find that if you don't capture it in 4K, particularly when you're in VR, the image quality really doesn't look too fantastic so this monitor's 3440 by 1440 but i have obs running which is the software i use to record and stream um, and i just use that as a window into the sim because i'm predominantly playing in vr that's no problem at all we've got a camera up here that's the sony a6500 so i use that to uh, capture my my face when i'm recording and streaming speakers uh, as well, so apologies, a little bit of wobbling going on there. You can see there's lots of uh, Star Trek uh, posters, a sort of 60s memorabilia uh, down onto the desk. You can see uh, keyboard wise, I've got the Corsair K95, uh, also a Corsair uh, mouse that are both wired in. I do also have this wireless mouse so that I've got the ability to control uh, both PCs when I'm streaming. Uh, the Elgato Stream Deck there for controlling the stream. And then this fabulous piece of audio equipment, the Go uh, the Go XLR. It's a brilliant, brilliant bit of kit. It can capture audio off of my uh, VR headset as well as audio from the fantastic uh, Shure. Get that into focus. The Shure uh, SM7B on this uh, boom arm that's all you know cable managed I've got the cables going through the boom arm and then down into the desk trying to keep things neat and tidy a couple of headphones for when I'm in the mood for some music or uh, an unashamedly um, playing phasmophobia so that gives you a view of the desk a few more VR headsets up here of course so the the valve index the quest 2 and the Vive Pro 2, as well as some uh, some Star Trek ships there. Lights up there, the Agato key lights uh, with soft boxes on. That one's on. This one is off. So that we've got some decent lighting in the room. Some more Star Trek ships on a little shelf up there, as well as Steam VR base stations. You'll see lots of those darted around the room. Uh, then on to really the latest addition to the room and that's the uh, the sim pit made out of extruded aluminium self-designed and self-assembled cost about about 300 pounds to do that 
all of the kits that I found were £550 upwards. And I've used bolts that, that pull the extruded aluminium together and that gives it real rigidity and strength. Lots of the kits didn't have that. And on here, I've got a GT Omega chair. That wasn't massively expensive. I think that was about £160. And I've been very pleased with it. Um, it was a pain, however, to bolt to the extruded aluminium. And on there the alpha yoke from a honeycomb aeronautical fantastic bit of kit uh, as well as the bravo throttle quadrant above that we've got the logitech radio panel and what is this well that's a thrustmaster mfd doing quite a bit more uh, dcs and you'll be seeing some of that on the channel greatly assisted by the Verpal CM3 throttle. And if you look just tucked down here in this corner, just hiding away there, is the Verpal uh, joystick and base. And videos of all of those uh, available on the channel, and I will link uh, down in the description. When I'm not doing flight simming VR, if I'm playing something like Half-Life Alex, yes, I do do normal VR as well. I've got haptic feedback a vest. We've got the Apollo rocket tucked in the back. I've got this somewhat slightly janky solution for my mouse, which is a little, little table. We're going to change that, put a proper, I think probably underneath the Bravo throttle, we're going to put some sort of metal tray or something like that and get it all nice and neat and tucked away a monitor uh, there that generally if i'm facing in this direction when i'm filming content i put notes on there uh one of the most important things is a fan it gets mightily 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 hot in here some more lights with soft boxes more steam vr sensors a huge soft box up there um, and then of course a microphone on a long boom arm that's nice and easy to move. We've got the Thrustmaster Pendular TPR pedals uh, there as well. So that's the office. A little bit more to do, I think, on, uh, on the sim pit. But you know, for somebody who's making content regularly, I was finding that putting the Alpha Yoke and Bravo throttle on the desk all the time, having to move the keyboard and mouse... I mean, there were days I was doing that three or four times a day, and that was just getting uh, very, very, very daft indeed. But there we go, guys, a whistle-stop tour of my office. If you're new to the channel and you're looking for uh, new aircraft for your simulator, check out my review of the Kodiak 100. As always, I hope you're very well wherever in the world you are. Stay safe in the skies, and I will see you in my next one.